will, I don't expect I'll ever forget that. That is, that's etched in your memory forever. It's, it's fine, it's a small community, about 430 people in total. Uh, the island is 37 square miles, it's quite big, but a greater part of it is moorland. And it's just around the edges that the people live. We have uh, around 20 volunteer crew members on the lifeboat at the moment. Uh, so we have a good, strong, uh, a good strong crew here. Engine breakdowns, foul propellers, groundings. Difficult really to put there's no pattern to it. There just can be just can be any anything really. The Pentland Firth is reputed to be one of the wildest pieces of water in the world. It can just throw up a, like a boiling cauldron. It's got no pattern, it just throws a vessel up in the air and suddenly you're airborne and you're falling in a, in, a, in a trough. A disaster strikes suddenly at sea. On the very day that Cox and Kirkpatrick's third medal was announced, the Greek vessel Irene was driven aground on nearby South Ronaldsey. The distress call went out. True to the traditions of the lifeboat service, the Long Hope lifeboat put out to the rescue into seas lashed to a fury by hurricane force winds. Eventually, well, there was no reply, which was, it's no uncommon to lose communication for a time, but when it goes on for hours, well, there's, it's pretty obvious that there's something strange going on. So by the morning, it was pretty obvious that there was been a disaster of some kind. I was actually a member of the Coast Guard company. I was only 18 then, but I had joined the Coast Guards. I was actually in the, the bad weather watch hut that night when the news came through that the boat had been righted in Scrabster and uh, there was no, no self-righting ability. So the boys that were inside, well, had no chance at all, none. It was a terrible, terrible, terrible time. You just couldn't think that this had happened, you know? And, uh, yeah, very, very hard. I was just on a, a, on a shore crew luncheon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I knew them all. He did school with half of them. Yeah. They were actually just your mate, what is young men, you know, and we just all kicked around together and down for the whole of our lives, drank together. Chased women together, <laughs> just the usual thing that men do. <sighs> My brother Billy was the first one to respond and say to the the then on sec, as was he was my predecessor, he said when you're thinking about another crew, keep me in mind. 
and there was another chap as well, Morris Mowat. He said, I'll, I'll volunteer as well. And uh, then more and more of, of us came forward. And, and uh, with the full support of the widows, they all said, the boat must continue, the, the, the service must be done. We can't lose this for the community. This is what Brims has always done and could, should always continue to do. These women, I can't, I can't praise them enough for their strength and their integrity and belief. They, they were absolutely amazing. And I was only a young chap then. And they, since then I've lived my life by their example. And they've always, any time when there's a bad thing happens to your life, and I've had plenty of bad things, you always think about that ladies just how strong they were, how much, how much they taught us all. They were amazing. Sorry. Things do advance. Uh, the, I suppose the single biggest advancement from the disaster time is uh, it has to be the self-writing capability, which Sharon had as well. But uh, we've moved uh, on again. Now we've moved up another sort of eight or nine knots with the new Tamar class boat, an extra thousand horsepower, so the response time's a lot quicker. I think I probably feel quite proud, really, that uh, they wanted to join and um, they've grown up with a pager lion um, in the house 24-7, so I dare say, like myself, I, they perhaps found it a sort of natural progression, you know, and, uh, you know, it's this one volunteer service that, uh, like some others, but you get to help people in and uh, I think they probably enjoy helping people out as well. So there's not a finer thing to do than be able to help somebody out. My dad, um, although he probably wouldn't like me saying this, um, was a big inspiration to me. Well, still is now, but um, growing up, he was probably the main person that inspired me to join the lifeboat um, crew. And like, he was always encouraging and even though I like not the stereotypical boy to be joining or anything, he was really wanted girls to join and was just really encouraging to me and what I wanted to do. So he was a big inspiration. These guys did a great job, what they did in that era, there's absolutely no question about it. Uh, we have it a lot easier now. Uh, thanks to the generosity of the public, uh, allowing that and Lai to develop the boats to the standard they are today, really. It's the commitment of the people of the communities around the coast that man the boats, that keep them at sea. That's, that's the, what drives the institution. And we've had a 100% commitment from this community the lifeboat, always.